okay, we want to be in ketosis in order to have optimum health. We can't be in ketosis if we're eating carbohydrates. So the other thing is that if you're eating mostly protein, mostly ribeyes, as a male, you can get away with that because there's a lot of fat and fatty meat. Women need more fat than men do. Our endocrine system needs more fat in order for us to have a healthy hormone levels. Cholesterol makes steroid hormones. So that's why women need more, uh, I would say 80, 20, but it doesn't have to always be 80, 20. I would say the healing process requires 80, 20. And then you could go down to 70, 30 when you are, your symptoms are resolved. Many women tell me that they go back to that when they have stress or when certain things are, you know, difficult in their lifestyle and they feel better eating the 80, 20. It doesn't have to be the same every day. I'm not a numbers person. You get to a point where you are healed and then it, you'll have more, you know, if I have eight clients in a day, I may run and get more butter on my jerky than a day when I'm not having eight clients. Men, I usually start with 70, 30. Okay. So the endocrine system are, it's, it's the glands that make hormones in our body and the hormones are signaling agents that tell the body what to do. Basically it makes physi physiology happen. It tells organs uh, what to do, heart, how fast to beat, when to beat, et cetera. It does everything. Uh, all steroid hormones are made out of cholesterol and all uh, thyroid hormones, peptide hormones are made out of protein. So there are no carbohydrates, no hormones are made out of carbohydrates. So they are not necessary for the endocrine system. The thing about the endocrine system though, is that the, the thi I call, and many other sciences call thyroid, the master gland, it directs every single other gland and production of hormone in the body. You know, really, because the thyroid directs everything. So erectile dysfunction, um, they're going to put it to low testosterone. But the thyroid hor hormone regulates how much testosterone is made out of the fat you eat. If you are under a lot of stress, you will be making cortisol, which is a steroid hormone, but not able to make perhaps as much testosterone. So you can either have an, a low fat diet, you won't be able to make much testosterone, or you can have low thyroid function, you can't make much testosterone, or you won't, don't have enough iodine, which is what thyroid hormone is made out of. Skin, the skin is a very adrenal organ. The digestive mm -hmm. system is, uh, I would say the intestines. So the tissues seemingly more sensitive to adrenal dysfunction are skin and digestion. Because if you're in a fight or flight state, you're a you won't be able to digest. Your skin is very sensitive to psoriasis, eczema. That's more adrenal. Sympathetic nervous system, depression, things like that are also very adrenal. But again, depression, bipolar illness, oh, schizophrenia, these are all things related to low thyroid function. I used a stick of butter and a pound of meat as a way to visualize for people to easily visualize an 80-20 ratio. Um, it doesn't have to be a stick of butter. It could be tallow. I would prefer beef tallow or lamb tallow, mutton fat, ruminant, because that is the least inflammatory. Why are some people gaining weight? Because they have to heal. You cannot, if you are in a state of fight or flight, your body will hold on to weight because it thinks that it's holding on to calories for you to run away from danger. So if you're in constant fight or flight, you've been yo-yo dieting all your life, running 10 miles a day like I did when I was in my 20s, you will put yourself into a constant high cortisol state, which will hold on to weight. Inflammation causes the same issue. Trauma and stress cause the same fight or flight response. Your body doesn't know if it's a tiger. Abuse, malnutrition, you taking your phone to bed, all of these things causing a dopamine, you know, too much dopamine signaling, all these things can cause hyperstimulation and put you in a fight or flight state. I would say that a high fat carnivore diet works because it's anti-inflammatory. It lowers cortisol. It takes you from that hypersympathetic state into a parasympathetic state. So you're no longer in fight or flight. So that's why I use it doesn't have to be a stick of butter. It could be four ounces of butter is my go-to. I don't have any issues with butter, butter, but people who have incredibly inflammatory or in an incredibly inflammatory state may be sensitive to the tiny amount of milk protein in butter. So if a person tells me they're feeling more inflammation, because usually they feel less inflammation with the butter, I say, try tallow for two weeks and see if that does it. Because it may be that tiny amount or, or ghee, 
of uh, milk protein because our immune system is going to react to proteins, right? It's looking for viruses and bacteria, which are made out of protein. So that tiny amount, that person may be hypersensitive to. They won't be forever until they're fixed, but in the beginning, they may be. When I give this and in my book, I say that it's you do that for a month and then you readjust and then you see what else you need. Usually people who are, have, who are able to reduce inflammation and are in deep ketosis, which is the anti-inflammatory state we want to be in. And if they can increase the protein and still stay in ketosis, dependent upon what we're trying to fix. If a person's bipolar, they're going to need to stay high fat for a while until their brain metabolism improves. We need protein, obviously we need protein, but we know that we can do what we can, what we need to do with the protein with a gram or 1.2 grams a day. I built three kilo of muscle eating 76, 24 ratio in a month when I started lifting uh, weights at the gym, I was just doing paddle boarding before. So when Dr. Bright is saying 76, 24, that's 76% of calories coming from fat, 24% of calories coming Correct. from protein macros. Correct. So the yeah. amount of protein and fat in the, the protein that you weigh on the scale doesn't equal to the protein that you're actually ingesting. You have to kind of go on an app like MyFitnessPal or Carb Manager and have a peek at what the protein is. But a lot of people, they do well, especially for that shorter term, as you said, how long is that average period that you'd say that if you're intensively healing? I would say a month. The endocrine system works on a month, both male and female, a month. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't measure anymore, but I'm 80, 20, 76, 24. You know, I just measured the 20, 76, 24, because all of a sudden I had all this muscle mass and everybody's like, oh, you can't build muscle mass if you're not, you know, if you're eating high fat. And I said, no, I'll check for this week. And there I was. Well, I'm looking for inflammation so to re reduce. So how you're feeling, if your joints don't hurt anymore, if you wake up with more energy, if you're able to sleep better, all of these things are, people come to me with, a, you know, I have a questionnaire and I ask them what's going on. What, what are the presenting issues? And these presenting issues have to be addressed. If there may be, you know, people often forget their, that how well they feel and they, oh, I didn't lose 20 pounds like I wanted to, but I feel fantastic. I don't no longer have psychotic attacks. Uh, my, my, my GFR went up. My kidneys are functioning better. Usually it's a cortisol issue by that time. So I will definitely ask for salivary cortisol test and see if they have cortisol issues. I will address lifestyle changes. Don't take your phone to bed. Turn off the lights at nine. Stop doing marathons, you know, things like that that are important. Uh, I had this wonderful wonderful experience of speaking with someone today who listens to has a very very busy very demanding lifestyle and she listens to a piece of a piano uh at night and all night it's the same short riff that keeps going and it helps her sleep and now she has internalized it so when it's very stressful at work she just hears that in her brain and it switches her from a hypersympathetic state into a parasympathetic state and that lowers her stress. So how does cortisol and stress hold on to fat? Because you're in a fight or flight state. So we burn, your liver is burning, your liver is making sugar in order for you to send energy to your muscles to run. The last thing it's doing is digesting. In the context of healing and weight loss, do you think what matters, the hormones, the healing, calories, which one is it or is it both? Calories don't matter. Calories don't matter, but I mean, most people need to eat to satiety. Hormones definitely matter. Uh, you cannot lose weight. So when I'm talking about stress, I'm also talking about inflammation. If you have inflammation, uh, inflammation could be caused by something like hair dye, which is full of xenoestrogens, skin creams. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be only marathon running and uh, going to bed with your phone. If your body's in fight or flight, it doesn't want to get rid of fat. It wants to hold on to fat. Well, that's really, that's a really important part of it. And we have to look at, you want to talk about exercise when, when you're in fight or flight, you should not exercise. You should, I mean, I recommend weight training and not cardio. So I had a terrible experience myself by doing too much cardio. Uh, I sort of maxed out my adrenals. And what you're doing is you're not hurting your adrenal tissue. You're just, your body will not allow you to be in a chronic high cortisol state because it's inflammatory. It burns neurons and pulverizes bones. So your brain, your pituitary gland will no longer produce 
um, ACTH to tell your adrenals to make cortisol. So you end up with low cortisol. So high eventually becomes low. You have to remove stimulants in that state because stimulants are kicking your adrenals in the butt, making them produce adrenaline because any kind of stimulant, caffeine will force or exercising cardio, you'll feel sick. You will, won't recover f- uh, from the exercise well because you're kicking your adrenals, forcing them to make cortisol. Studies show that if your cardio is high for more than 15 minutes, your heart rate is high for more than 15 minutes, you will go into, your body will start producing cortisol. So the trick is to keep it under that. Uh, that's why I like weight training because you're pausing, you're doing reps, you stop a minute, you know, you're not in this, I don't like uh, high intensity interval training for that reason, because it's constantly keeping your heart rate up. Long walks are wonderful. Smell flowers, hear birds, long walks, you're engaged in nature, you're in a parasympathetic state because you're not on a treadmill looking at a machine telling you go faster, go faster, go faster. The whole, uh, the whole heart rate cardio comes from calories, calories in calories out. It doesn't work. It's not true. Hormones matter. Hormones decide. Chicken breast is low fat. I mean, chickens are carnivores and they're supposed to eat worms and bugs. Hard to find chickens that eat worms and bugs. So there's a higher omega-6 content in chicken. Uh, After you are doing better and you have less inflammation and you can handle chicken, i rather you have the leg or the thigh because it has higher fat. Other than that, yes, it's a carnivore food but it has a higher omega-6 content and some people may react. I don't think you should be afraid of anything, number one. So we, we do the best we can. Um, somebody who has an autoimmune issue may be more susceptible to the omega-6. Somebody who doesn't won't be. I have patients who react to chicken and not pork. Pork is also not supposed to be fed grain. So you're gonna increase the omega-6 in the pork. I think that once you're healed or in a healing state, you won't be as reactive. You won't be as sensitive to the less than optimum foods. Chicken doesn't have any iron, doesn't have enough iron. We know the ruminant meat, beef and lamb, goat are gonna have more iron. Fish doesn't have any iron. So I think that ruminant meat should always be the backbone of our diet just so we can have enough iron. We can definitely eat these other carnivore foods unless we're highly inflamed. And then we get to the point where we can eat these other carnivore foods. They don't eat very good food. They don't eat what fish are supposed to eat. They are in a fake environment. Uh, in the U.S., you can get wild salmon. I think that would be better than, um, it's easier for you, for people maybe to get ruminant meat, doesn't have to be grass-fed, than wild salmon. That's my only problem. Salmon is not fatty. There's a part of the salmon that is fatty, but that's not the piece. The dark meat, that's usually not the piece we get. So it's a good food when you're healed. Absolutely. We spend less money carnivore than we ever did when we were eating vegetables and other foods. So we've actually checked this out. We've compared what we spent of pre-carnivore to carnivore when I was 52, 54, and now. So the cost of meat has gone up, but you also have to understand that when you are functioning better and healing, you're spending less money and you're making more money because you're feeling better. Ken Berry has talked about, yes, I think that you can be carnivore and eat sardines and hot dogs. Absolutely. It depends on what you're trying to fix, but you can be low budget carnivore. You don't have to eat ribeye. You can eat hot dogs and butter and sardines. You have to be careful about the what they're packed in because now there are loopholes. You can say it says it's in olive oil, but it's actually 5% olive oil and 95% safflower oil, oil, unfortunately. I don't worry about calcium, so I don't think that the bones that I'm eating with the anchovies of the sardines are that necessary for my health. Um, omega-3s are a buzzword now. I get adequate omega-3 from the fat of my meat. So I don't think that's something you have to eat to be healthy. I think one of the great French snacks is anchovies with butter. So, you know, on little toasts, just don't eat the toast, raw, the whole raw thing. Okay. So when you pasteurize milk, you're killing enzymes, right? You're killing, you're taking away the probiotic content of the milk that is supposed to make you be able to digest the milk better. You're not changing the macronutrient content. You're not changing the lactose, the milk protein, or the fat content. That doesn't change. So my concern, my my issue is I, I'm using macronutrients to heal people. 
I'm not using enzymes and probiotics because a carnivore gut doesn't need the probiotics that the vegetable eating gut needs. Um, I don't see any benefit. Neither do I. And I'm so glad that you said that. This one, <laughs> I know you love. I don't, I mean, I will never eat salted butter, but a person can, you need salt on a carnivore diet. So I don't see any problem with it. It's just my personal taste. I like salted butter. Then I move to the non-salted butter and I add my Redmond's real salt on top. And boy, does that taste like heaven. I love <laughs> lamb. And when I'm in Scotland, I eat a ton of lamb. Can't get good lamb here. So bacon's fine. It's fine. It's processed. You have to see if you can handle what agents it was processed with if you have inflammation. That's all. It's not necessary, obviously. It's carbohydrates. We don't need the flavonoids and the blueberries and the red things. All that is is a bunch of crap. Um, I think that you can absolutely, if you do well with heavy cream, with the milk protein content in heavy cream, and you want to add some berries to it in the summer, and everything else is working fine, it's okay. It's not... The, the 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 handful of berries that you're going to eat is not going to throw you out of ketosis. There are no anti-nutrients in fruit. I would say that durian, tropical fruits are have so much mango, papaya, have so much more sugar than berries and apples. I think you're safer with berries and apples. If that, if you don't have a neurological disorder like Parkinson's where you need to measure your ketones, I would say even if you do, a handful of berries is not going to throw you out into uh, out of ketosis. Vegetables have anti nutrients. Fruits don't have anti nutrients. They just have sugar. Boy, I recommend avoiding stimulants because you're kicking your adrenals whenever you're having the the zero point zero 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 one amount of caffeine and decaf in the morning is not going to cause an inflammatory response. Moving from somebody who's eating carbs, perhaps, or a high stress situation, or an inflammatory situation. They need to balance their blood sugar, stop the adrenaline from kicking in. And they do that with small amounts of fat at these times of the day that will give them the energy they need not to go into a parasympathetic, I mean, a sympathetic stress state because the fat in the morning is according to medicine. If you're not eating carbohydrates, you're not eating, you're fasting. So we know it's not fasting because we're getting energy from the butter. But medically speaking, you're fasting. But I'm going to snack when I'm working all day, going back and forth, because I'm going to go get a piece of butter and put it on a piece of jerky so I can get through another hour of thinking a lot about what's going on with the person in front of me. And I think people know when they're fasting too much, you'll have those feelings of tension, anxiety. I think that Dr. Joan Ifland spoke about that around food addiction. And she was saying that, she grew up in a traumatic household. So she learned that, oh, she has to take out the sugar and the processed foods. Once she did that, she found that she wasn't raging in front of her mm -hmm. children anymore. Yeah. I don't really believe in addiction because to me, addiction is an energy deficiency. So you're craving something, you need something. It's usually a stimulant and sugar is a stimulant. If you're able to make energy naturally properly, you won't have any addictions. The little girl who has chocolates or candies in her pillowcase and grows up to have substance abuse issues is because she was unable to metabolize energy properly. So do you think there's any such thing as sugar addiction? Energy, energy. It's an energy deficiency. You're unable to turn ener make energy properly. So you need, and you need sugar because sugar is just metabolized on your tongue with amylase, it's saliva, boom, it's broken down. If you can't properly metabolize and it's more complicated, fat and are unable to break down fat and protein into fatty acids, but you need energy for your brain, you will be looking for carbs. So anybody who has a hormonal dysfunction, thyroid or adrenal will need stimulants. Sugar is the easiest stimulant, the most accessible stimulant around. So a can of sardines has 35 micrograms of iodine. The thyroid needs daily six milligrams of iodine, breast tissue needs daily five milligrams of iodine. The ovaries in the uterus and the male, the prostate, all tissue, all mucus producing tissue, that means vaginal, intestinal, 
sinus, respiratory, all need iodine. We cannot get it anymore. Our environment is so polluted with forever chemicals, PFAS, PFAAs, phthalates, halides, fluoride, chloride, et cetera. They interfere with the absorption of iodine. We can't get it. We all must supplement with Lugol's iodine, which is the, was invented in 1829 by Jean Lugol, and it is the perfect solution for us to supplement with. We know that there's bromide in, in car seats and baby seats in our couch, uh, fire retardant. So everybody should supplement with iodine, men and women. And most importantly, adolescents, because adolescents need 40% more th iodine and 40% more thyroid hormone because they're starting to build sexual characteristics, both male and female. So where are they getting it from? So the thyroid will take as much as it can because the thyroid builds sexual characteristics. Hi thyroid hormone it regulates the building of sexual characteristics. And if they don't have iodine, they won't be able to have the iodine from which the thyroid hormone is made. Well, along with the th iodine and the thyroid hormone, you need steroid hormones. Cortisol levels peak at three months old, and then they peak, they rise precipitously again during adolescence because estrogen is being produced, testosterone is being produced, and those hormones raise cortisol levels naturally, in a natural way, okay? Now, if you don't have enough fat in your diet, I ate no fat when I was 15. I fasted, you know, 500 calorie diets for like five months, crazy things like that. So right at the time when a young person, an adolescent needs to make testosterone and estrogen and have enough fat, cholesterol to make these cortisol levels possible, also to address stress, of course, they're not eating it. And that has huge repercussions on mental health. Okay. Which leads to depression, anxiety, ADHD, bipolar. Boom, antidepressants are prescribed. Young adults, you know, high fat is so important. And I think that the fat deficiency in our life, it causes all of these problems that we have in our life. But Dr. Bright, I want to say thank you so much for this encyclopedia about healing, which is going to lead to your fat loss using a high fat carnivore diet. And I'm hoping that drilling down into the specifics is going to help people on their weight loss journey and their healing journey to follow the high fat protocol the right way. So thank you, Dr. Bright. And I'm sure that we're going to see you very soon.